Oh, oh. Just arrived at my new venue, um, Mid Ken Water. I've got a bit bored, so I decided to do a little um, run through of how I make a cup of tea on the bank. That's two sightings of fish jumping out in that area. I am just watching a swan going over my spot. Do not dive down. Yes. Awesome. What a lovely, stunning looking carp. I had a bite about one o'clock in the morning, I think it was. We get up really early and um, see if I can see anything jump or roll. And I got another take, and there was another tench. Only a little one, really. I just left it back. It's been difficult, and I've been putting in a few sessions on here, and nothing's really happened. Mm. Yep, yep, I need that. Just arrived at my new venue, um, Mid Kent Water. Uh, just having a little look around at the moment, trying to figure out where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do. I'm uh, sitting in a swim that I think I'm going to be in. I can't really see any carp or anything or anything show. This lake's not very big, the one I've picked for tonight. Yeah, I can't really see anything for show, but I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm just going to have to just put the bait in and just see if they arrive at some point. I think that's probably going to be the way. I don't know how many carp are in here at all. All I know is there's a lots of doubles and twenties, so there could be a chance of getting a carp. My first night, let's see about that. Well, hopefully I do. Well, I've set up now. And the only reason I picked this swim is because it gives me quite a lot of water in front of me. And there's not really that many swims on here, to be honest. Um, there's only about five or six swims. Uh, so I decided to pick this one because it's the most widest part. And I get to see, I get to see, and I also get to uh, reach the fish if I see carp jump or anything. Uh, it gives me a bit of an option for next time, just in case I want to come on this lake again and I get to spot fish on a certain area because um, I can see pretty much the whole water from here. So that's why I've picked here. What I've done is I've actually put two rods on one spot. Um, I've led it around and I've actually found a nice gravel area about 13 wraps out, which is brilliant. Uh, I could put two rods on that, which is what I wanted. I can actually use three rods here. So what I've done on the third rod is I've actually pulled it out to the right um, there's like a snaggy tree on this this bit that sort of sticks out. It's where the lake sort of splits in half uh, into two sections. It's sort of like an island, really. I mean, it's not proper island, but um, I'm decided to put one on the end. It's quite silty and it's quite weedy around there, but it's quite a nice little feature. So um, you know, hopefully I'll get a bite on that. Or oh, I might get one on the uh, area that I found on the gravel. That's the reason I've decided to fish one on a sort of silty area and one on and the other two on a gravelly area. I don't know what they feed on, I don't know what's the best on this lake. So hopefully we'll get a carp.
I've decided to do varied hook baits. I've got one that's on a trimmed down dumbbell wafter that I've trimmed down a yellow pop-up and I've actually put it on top. So it's like a little um, sighter on top. And the other one, I've actually just trimmed down the pop-up um, with the Ronnie rigs that I'm using. Um, it sort of acts like a wafter really, it's not a pop-up, it, you're chopping it down quite a bit and it loses buoyancy. They're both on lead clip setups with tubing, the rules are that I can't use leaders or anything so I've decided to do that. I've only got short tubing as well so it's not like I've gone crazy with it, um, it is a bit annoying when you get too long a length and it just takes forever to thread it through. It's not my favourite type of um, setup but the rules are rules. I was a little bit worried fishing with the clips that I was going to get tangled so what I've done is I've actually made little PVA bags up, little mesh bags um, just with some pellets in. It just helped to keep the rig out and hopefully um, I won't get any tangles. On the other rod I've actually got a naked chod rig on. I've actually put on a 15mm uh, pink pop-up on that. The spawn mix I'm using is sweet corn, hemp, chopped boilies and whole boilies. Pretty simple, pretty easy to put together. Um, and I put about seven spoms straight over on that gravel patch and I've got two rods on it and the other rod I've just put over a handful of boilies. I don't really want to go crazy with the bait, I want to keep it very simple, very light and uh, yeah, hopefully it catches me a cut. <laughs> Well, nothing's happened so far, uh, apart from a duck, which dived down and managed to pick up the rig. That's about it. I haven't seen any fish, show. I haven't seen a single carp, or I haven't even seen any bubbles or anything to show that there's any carp around at all at the moment. Um, yeah, I've been looking around, keep, keep my eyes on the water, see if I can see any. I've been looking around to see if I can see anything. I haven't seen anything show at all. No bubbles, no jumps, no nothing. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I've learned a few things. Um, I know that this lake hasn't done a carp since November, but it is the easier venue to pick. Um, there is another lake behind me, uh, which I probably will be on next time. I just wanted to come on here and get a quick buy. There is two lakes on here, so I've got a bit of a choice. Um, I've just thought I'd come on here and get a quick buy or quick overnight and just might get a chance of getting something. I've also learned that it is an island next to me. Um, I thought it wasn't. I thought it was just where it split in, into two bits, but it turns out it is an island. Apparently there is a little gap of water in between, so it does. it is an island. Which is good because uh, you know carp like to patrol around islands. Even if they can't quite get round it all the way through, they're going to patrol up and down it at some stage. Um, and the bailiff said that, yep, you can get bites off there. Um, he's also said you can get bites off the gravel bar that's out there, which I found. So I've, I'm doing everything. Well, there's only a few swims on here really. So I mean. I can try this one out for now and I might come back again another time but I'm, next time I might move on to the lake behind me it's got bigger carp in it's got carp up to 35 pound this one is meant to have carp up to 30 but I think a lot of the carp are doubles apparently quite a few of them are that sort of size um, but the bigger carp are in the one behind me so I might move on to that one for next time and uh, hopefully we'll get some better weather because it's meant to be cold tonight um, and it's been cold the last couple of nights and it looks like we're in for a right old cold spell in the next couple of days. 
well next week it might be a bit more difficult to get a carp out because they're going to hit that colder weather for a little while but this session I'll just stay on here and see if I can get a quick bite overnight um, I don't know if it's a nighttime venue or it's an early morning venue I don't really know uh, we'll see uneventful night really nothing's happened uh, this morning I've been having a look around see if I can see anything and uh, I've seen a few fish sort of splashing and uh, breaking the surface I don't really know if they're carp or tench or bream or anything really I know there's a few species in this lake so uh, it could be any of those at the moment uh, yeah I mean there's fish showing they could be carp and they're pretty much everywhere so there's no real Pacific area where they've been shown at the moment it's pretty early still though um, so it could be a chance of getting a bite this morning I suppose oh we just saw another fish jump I don't know what that was it looked a bit silvered to me uh, that fish I don't know roach maybe <laughs> so, uh, just have myself coffee clean myself up Ugh. Well, I'm not going to give it too long. I'm probably going to give it until about 11. That's when I arrived, really. Hopefully, I can catch a carp before I have to go, and uh, be nice to do that. Uh, especially as my first session here. Next time, I probably will go on the other lake and uh, explore on there. Really, that's where I really wanted to go. But um, I decided to come on here just to get a bite for a quick overnighter. Uh, but I'll probably put all my effort in to get a really big carp out of that lake. Hopefully I'll get a bite this morning, if not, well, at least I tried and I've come out in uh, all sorts of weather, really. Well, yesterday was really sunny, today is cloudy and raining, so uh, interesting contrast of days. I don't know what's going to be better, sunny day or a miserable day. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I still think there could be a chance to get a bite this morning. I've seen a few of you showing, so... Hopefully I do. anything on my first session here hopefully next time I will all I caught was a duck <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to do something to try and avoid them next time well another session at the mid Ken water uh, I've just got here uh, it's just started raining a little bit um, it's got worse <laughs> since I've got into the swim uh, I couldn't really figure out where I was gonna go I had a little look around as much as I could there's not that many swims on this lake. I've decided this time I've actually fished in another lake. Last time I was fishing a lake next door, now I'm gonna fish this one. Um, this one's got bigger carp in it. This is the one I actually wanted to fish, but the other one had a few more carp in it, so I thought there could be a chance of getting one on that first night, and, well, <laughs> I didn't get a bite, but I've decided now I'm just gonna focus all my effort on this one, because it's got much bigger carp in it. I had a little look around, there was a few people on, and a few people just loving a look around. Uh, I couldn't figure out where I was going to go at all, but I saw quite a wide swim and I thought I'm going to go around there and uh, see if I can see anything. I came in the swim and I saw something jump about halfway and I thought, oh, what's that? Uh, I couldn't tell if it was carp or not. I mean, it could have been a carp, it could have been a bream. I just saw a splash and I thought, yeah, that's where I want to be. Yeah, so when I saw that fish jump, I decided to lead around to find out what was out there and I uh, found gravel right where that fish jumped. So it could have been a carp, it could have been a bream, I'm not entirely sure. 
I just spoke to someone that was having a look around. He was actually on the far side and he just said that he saw a carp jump as well. Um, they were standing there on the opposite bank while I was messing around sorting out rigs and stuff and a fish jumped out there so that's two sightings of fish jumping out in that area so I decided to put two out on that spot because that fish jumped and another one jumped clearly that's where I want to be so I put two rods on that spot about eight wraps out on the other rod I've just tucked it in in front of this tree uh, it's about 10 foot right in front of this tree uh, firm bottom not gravel but firm so I've decided to put a rig down there um, yeah so I figured out where I'm gonna go figured out what I'm gonna do two rods on that gravel spot out in the middle and one rod down that margin deep margin with a nice hanging tree on it so uh, hopefully I'll catch a car The rigs I'm using is I'm going to put two on the clip with a tubing because that is the rules here you have to use tubing or uh, pretty much no leader really um, and I've decided to put on the same baits I fished last time which is one is a 12 mil yellow pop-up that I've trimmed down around the sides and it basically becomes a wafter and the other one is a dumbbell wafter that I've cut off the top of it and I've put a little sliver of yellow pop-up on top of it um, it's still a wafter doesn't it's no more buoyant than the wafter itself so it sits perfectly on the bottom on the other rod I've got an inline drop off on a bit of tubing um, I've just set it up to drop because I don't really want to get it under that tree with a lead on I'm gonna lose it otherwise so that's the reason I've done that I'm actually fishing with a 15 mil bottom bait with a 12 mil pink pop up on top of that uh, just thought I'd have a go at a snowman see if it works I thought it was a good bait as well so I'm gonna try it out and uh, see what goes on I'm still playing around with baits I'm still playing around with things as soon as something happens and soon as something works then I will probably more like to use that more often um, I'm just seeing what's gonna work at the moment I've actually put about seven spoms over the, the two rods that are out on the gravel spot and I've actually put about four spoms down there in front of that tree the spawn mix I'm actually using is pretty much hemp and then I've put chopped boilies, whole boilies, sweet corn, and that's pretty much it really. I mean, I'm not gonna go crazy. Last time I had a problem with the birds diving down, so what I've done this time is I put more hemp in it and uh, less sweet corn and less boilies in it, so they can't really see them. Uh, they're gonna be able to spot them out, but the hemp is a bit dark, so it's gonna blend in a bit more and they're not gonna see it as much as they come over the top. So that's the reason I've done that. Um, yeah, pretty simple mix. Hopefully in it, it'll catch me a cup.
Well, uh, so far nothing's happened. Getting closer to evening now, so uh, I wasn't really expecting anything for the first couple of hours anyway. Um, I did see another carp jump as well, a bit more left than that I was actually fishing, but um, definitely still promising really. Something is out there jumping and I uh, haven't really seen anything else jump. I've had a look around and I haven't seen anything else, so I'm still in a good area. Hopefully I get a bite overnight, but last time I was here I was on the other lake and uh, when I got to about 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning, the fish started jumping out, mostly like other species and bream and uh, tench and etc. There was the odd carp as well. I think that's when they really wake up on here. It's probably going to be more like morning, but we'll see. Uh, it's going to be a cold one tonight as well. It's going to go down to like 2 or 3 degrees. It's going to be cold. Well, it's been raining non-stop. It's only just stopped really, so... Uh, yeah, it could start up again as well. It's not meant to stop raining until sometime early morning. It's going to be an interesting night. Hopefully I'll catch something. Six in the morning, uh, nothing happened last night at all. I wasn't expecting it to be really. It was pretty cold last night. <laughs> I haven't really seen a huge amount of fish jumping. I've seen a few splashes, seems to be mostly small fish. Um, I have actually got a coot at the moment diving on my spot, which is not good. Uh, just making myself a drink, trying to wake myself up a little bit. There could be a chance to get in a bite in the next sort of couple of hours. If birds don't continuous dive on my spot and then I'm hooking a duck like I did last time, there could be a chance, I suppose. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Mm. Oh, just trying to continuous wake myself up. Yeah, I'm going to keep my eyes out for a bit and uh, see if I can see anything jump. Nothing's jumped for a little while now, but um, I'm going to keep keep my eyes on and see if I can see anything. Yeah, so hopefully I'll get a bite in the next couple of hours. If not, you know, it was worth coming out and having a go on here. Um, I'll probably be back soon anyway, so... Uh, well, I'm off fishing my syndicate in Yateley next week, but uh, the week after I definitely will be back. And hopefully the weather's going to be a bit better, to be honest. I would like to see a little bit more warmer days and a few more warmer nights because I think then the carp will actually start feeding properly on this sort of lakes. Um, there's not a huge amount of carp in here and uh, I think the, when the carp in here are willing to feed I think they've got a better chance because there's not huge amounts of numbers in here. So um, yeah, let's see if it warms up and let's see if I can catch something the last couple of hours. If I can't then I had a go and uh, I'll be off fishing a different venue for a couple of nights and uh, Hopefully I'll catch Dan as well. Let's see. I've had nothing but it's my first night on here I don't really know these lakes um, I'm still learning I'm gonna keep going I'm gonna keep trying and hopefully eventually I'll catch a carp from here well I'm back at Mid Kent I've uh, been waiting around to try and get into this swim actually I'm in now um, I had to wait a little while for someone to leave but the person that left had a fish or two I think he had two um, I'm not entirely sure but he definitely had a carp last night I think that's really good for me to catch tonight. It's only going to be a quick overnighter, so I need to go in the swim that's 
doing fish really. I mean, two weeks ago when I fished here last, there was a guy in this swim and he had two bites as well. So it is promising. The other thing about this swim is there is a lot of uh, grass weed out in front of me. Every time I was trying to find a spot, I just keep hooking these little uh, strands and um, bringing them back. So um, I'm just, I was just playing around trying to get those rigs in place. Um, I decided that I was going to put all three to the far side. There is a huge amount of tree cover out there, really snaggy. There's at least three or four trees that's all in the water. Um, it's really snaggy and I think the carp are in there sitting, them, sitting in there and sunning themselves and really they're safe in there. And I think that's why it's been juicing fish recently is because it's a very sheltered, shallow area that they can warm themselves up and they can sit under a snag and hide away from anglers and other things as well. I decided also that I was going to spread the rods about. What I've done is I've spread them around. I've got one near a tree and then I've got one about 10 foot away from that near this other tree. So there's a gap in the middle and I basically just got one on either side of that gap. And also the third one I've actually put it next to another tree that's collapsed which is slightly more right but uh, I thought I'd try somewhere different because I don't, I'm putting two rods reasonably close not that close and I put one a little more further away um, probably another 10 or 12 foot away from that near another tree so um, you know it could do a fish uh, hopefully I can do at least one that's what I'm planning on this swim really I just want to get a quick bite and catch something from this lake I decided to stick with the same rigs I did last time, all on Ronnie rigs. One's on an inline drop off with tubing, and the other two are clipped with tubing. What I've actually done is I've set all of them to drop off, so the inline drop off is already there, and the two clip rigs, I've just literally just put the, um, the little sleeve down a little bit. I've not gone crazy with it because I want that lead to drop off. It's really snaggy out there, and I do not want to lose a fish if I do get one. Two rods on the same hook bait, I'm playing around with something new. It's actually a maple pea with a yellow pop-up on top of it, which I've shaved down and to make it look like a plastic corn. Uh, you're not allowed to use plastics on these lakes, so I thought I'd try something a bit different. It's probably not gonna be used that many times. I don't doubt anyone's trimming down their pop-ups to look like a bit of plastic corn. So uh, I thought I'd have a go at that. And also maple peas, something a bit different. 
they are a bit fiddly and they, are, they, they, they do rip apart a little bit. They are a bit daft, but um, it looks like a good hook bait and I thought I'd have a go at it this time and if they stay on and uh, catch me a fish, then I might use them again. On the other rod, I've actually got a 15mm bottom bait with a pop-up on top of that. I've just got a yellow 12mm pop-up on top of that, so that's, that's it really for that rod. I'm still sticking with the particle mix. I've got hemp, sweet corn, chop boilies, whole boilies, and I've also put some maple peas in there as well. I'm doing something a bit different with the baiting up approach because I'm in a really sort of narrow, snaggy spot and I didn't really want to make too much disturbance. I've put in a couple of slingshots of bait, um, nothing crazy really. Um, I just wanted to put at least, I don't know, two over each rig. Um, it sort of went everywhere, but <laughs> that's what it's like with a slingshotting particle. It's not exactly uh, accurate. If I could get around to the other side, I would put bait in by hand. Um, but you can't really, so I didn't want to spod and I didn't want to spook any fish that were there. The casting spooks fish as it is, so I just wanted to make sure I put in some bait over each rod. I'm just slingshot a few bits. Um, I don't want to go crazy, I just want to put a few bits over each one, see if they go. So uh, hopefully with those tactics, I'll catch this time. Let's see. <laughs> had my first bite from here and uh, as you can see it's not a carp um, it's a tench yay <laughs> it's a nice tench but um, I'll get the rod back and hopefully next one will be a carp well I've just put that tench back and I've recast the rod and I put a little bit more bait out there a couple of um, slingshots out there nothing crazy just a few just a few pouches around that spot that's all it really needed. There was a few co coots diving down at the back and I thought that the uh, carp weren't there because they're co constantly diving on uh, right at the sort of back in between the chalk trees and some of them were diving down on my spot as well. Uh, but it looks like um, it looks like attention was feeding away and uh, not even bothered by the birds. So hopefully the carp won't be too much as well because uh, they are diving a little bit at the moment they're sort of moving around looking for those bits that sort of floated up maybe. <laughs> at the moment. I had that tench on actually the snowman which is really weird because I thought that um, if it was going to be a bream or a tench or some other species it was going to be that little teeny little bait that little um, maple pea and um, the little uh, bit of pop-up on top but no it picked up the snowman 15 mil bottom bait with the 12 mil pop-up on top of it it liked a big bait that tench <laughs> you wouldn't expect that but there you go got a couple of hours until dark really and um it looked really good for a bite and I got a tench. Getting a few indications at the moment, it might be birds diving down, uh, but I uh, started getting a few indications and then that rod went. So we could be in for a carp in this evening. Got a couple of hours until dark and uh, I'll see. <laughs> Thank you. 
after I had that tench, um, I did see a few fish jump and I was kind of expecting to get another bite to be honest because I was seeing quite a lot of like tench and I think I saw a few bream as well and I thought I saw a carp as well jump out right at the back right at the back of the trees and uh, and I got another take and there was another tench only a little one really I just slipped it back and got the rig back out there as soon as possible um, it was about to go dark so I literally just wanted to make sure it was in place for the night um, nothing happened during the night at all did hear a few splashes, but a couple of line bites, that's about it really. Nothing majorly happened. Pretty quiet, except for the road that's behind me. It was really busy last night, and uh, there's quite a lot of lights on the street up there, so um, um, didn't really get that great of a sleep, to be honest. Um, it's a bit bright around this sort of side of the lake. Yeah, apart from that, nothing. So, well, I think I got a good chance this morning. I've seen a few fish jumping this morning as well, so I was hoping that I was going to get a take. I did see a few tench and I was like, no, I don't want to get another tench, I want to get a carp this time. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to see what's going to happen really at the moment. It does still look good. It's a little bit colder today than it was yesterday. Uh, today yesterday was like 16 degrees, I think today's going to be like 11 or 12 or something like that, so it's going to be a lot more cooler. Uh, it's going to take a little while to get going as well, but uh, I'm hoping that a carp comes in here and tries to sun himself and maybe he wants to feed straight away before uh, sunning himself for the rest of the day but we'll see about that so hopefully I can catch something this morning but I'm probably only going to give it to 11 before I go so um, between now and 11 let's see if I can get a cup I was sitting here thinking what I was going to do next. Um, I didn't know if I was just going to leave them out or bring them in. There is a lot of that grass weed, like I keep saying, out there. So I've decided to bring two rods in and check on the hook baits and just reposition them really because the grass weed might end up covering over the rig because it sort of waves underwater, it sort of moves. Um, I have found little clear areas, but they're so small that it's really difficult to put that rig back into that same spot again but I was also worried that that rig was going to be sitting in that grass weed as well or the grass weed was going to cover over it so I decided just really just to reposition them. On the other rod I actually had some kind of like weird take this morning which I thought was a fish but once I brought it in the uh, lead hadn't dropped off and everything looked fine to me so I think it's more likely that a fish actually just picked the line up uh, in close maybe it was trailing some line or something like that or a rig or something and it's picked up my line I'm not entirely sure but it definitely wasn't a fish on the end so I ended up recasting that rod so that one is back in a different position and I'm happy where it went and the other two rods went out fine um, they're pretty clean areas as, as clean as you can get I may actually start to think about what I'm going to do next on these swims. Uh, where it now is up on this end, there's a couple of swims here and uh, apparently there is a lot of grass weed out here, um, especially in the summer. Uh, apparently it does extend quite a lot, I didn't realise how bad it was, I thought it was just in the real shallow water but turns out it's pretty much half the lake is going to be filled with it uh, by the summer, so um, I might re think about what rigs and what baits I'm going to be using next once it warms up and the grass starts growing even more. I also decided to put a couple of pouches of bait out there, just a couple, just to refresh the bait. Um, I had a lot of tench rolling on me last night and I also had a few coots diving down. I was a bit worried that there wasn't that much bait left or was none left so I've decided to just put a couple of scoops in and uh, see if anything happens. Yesterday after a couple of hours of putting some bait in I had that tench so I thought I'd try that while I've still got a couple of hours left and uh, see what happens really. I'm hoping that I'll get something. I am just watching a swan going over my spot. Do not dive down. Do not dive down. Swans. <laughs> I hate them when they go over your spot because they usually just put their neck down and they just eat everything. So I'm hoping he doesn't notice. It's, it is quite shallow there though. <laughs> He's probably going to see it. Oh no. This is a disaster here. Um, 
Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully I'll catch a carp within the next couple of hours. If not, I had a go and had a little bit of a change and uh, just a rethink really and um, just see what happens. Hopefully I'll catch something right the last couple of hours. If not, I tried. Well, I didn't catch anything else. Caught two tench, but hopefully next time I catch a carp. Well, I'm back at Mid Kent. It's only been a week since I came down here last. Um, the night temperatures have improved slightly, so uh, hoping that this session will be better than the last. Last time I had a few tench, hoping to get a carp this time. I have got a change of tactics, so I'm hoping it will make a difference this time. Um, I've come back to the same swim as I did last time as well because I felt that it could have been an opportunity to get a carp last time and I had those tench so I've slightly altered it just to, so I can try and pick out the carp. I decided to do what I did last time, put three rods up against the snags, one on one tree, one sort of in the middle and then one next to another tree that sort of collapsed in the, in the lake um, and it's just a big snag. It's basically made up of a couple of trees but there's like a big tree that's collapsed and I think there's a tree behind it and then the other one is another tree that's collapsed so there's, there's a gap in between as well so basically I've just one in the middle, one on one and one on the other. I want to move those rigs about, I don't want them to be in one area. I'm trying to figure out where the best area is really for the carp. Uh, last time I had the tench in roughly those areas as well so it is an area that I can catch carp in. Um, I've slightly altered things so hopefully this time I can catch something. I decided to keep two on the Ronnie rigs. I've put both on white pop-ups. They're the same pop-ups of the bottom baits that I've got. On the other rod, I've actually got a naked chod rig. Um, same pop-up, but I've also put a little bit of a pop-up on top of it, a yellow one. I've shaved down to look like a plastic corn um, because I, I wanted that fleck on top of it. That's what I used to do a lot. I used to fish that a lot on the naked chod rig with a white bait with a plastic corn on top of it. I can't use plastics here, so I've decided just to chop down a little bit of a pop-up. It did make it a bit more buoyant, but uh, I figured it out and uh, it's absolutely fine now. 
I've made sure that all of them are slow sinking because I want them out to nest on top of this weed that's out there. There's a lot of grass weed out in front of this swim and I wanted my baits just to nestle down. Uh, last time I was fishing with bottom baits and this time I've decided to fish with pop-ups so at least they can find themselves on top of a bit of weed or in that clearing if it, if it does land in a clearing. Uh, I've tried to make them land in a bit more of a cleaner area but it doesn't really matter too much because at least I put pop-ups on this time and hopefully it'll nestle down on that weed. The bottom baits are the same as the pop-ups but what I've done is I've soaked them overnight in a bit of water. I just wanted to bring out the flavour and soften them a little bit. It'd be more interesting than just putting them out as straight from the bag. Um, it also makes them a little bit washed out as well so it matches the hook baits a little bit more because the, there's a slight tone in the uh, bottom baits than there is on the pop-ups but that's about it. Um, so hopefully those tactics work and I, hopefully I'll catch my first cart from here. Let's see. It's a couple of hours until it gets dark. I haven't done anything so far, um, carp wise. I had a tench. Last time I had tench, and I thought that if I come off those particles which I was fishing last time, I might avoid them a little bit, but no, not really. They're picking up boilies, so. <laughs> uh, well, it's something at the moment. Hopefully, the next one is a carp. Well, at the moment, I'm just sitting back in the bivy. Um, the rain's sort of coming down in little patches in a moment. I think nothing like heavy or anything, but uh, yeah, I just thought I'd sit in here and uh, see what happens. Really, I mean, I had that tench. Um, I got every, I got every excited about that. I thought it was a carp. <laughs> oh, oh well. Um, hopefully, I'll get a bite tonight or maybe tomorrow morning. Um, been speaking to a few people and they've said that they've had bites in the morning so you know I think morning's probably the best bet really at the moment or maybe a couple of hours before it gets dark you never know Finally get another bite and uh, it's a tench again. I cannot believe this. I keep getting tench in this swim. I don't think there's any carp in it. <laughs> I'm sure there is, but uh, I'm sure there is uh, carp in here, but all I keep getting is tench. Right, lovely tench. I'm going to get him back and hopefully the next bite is definitely a carp. It's got to be.
Well, after you saw me with that tench, once I slipped it back, I recast the rod, and about an hour later, the rod went again, and it was another tench. And, uh, yeah, I was really happy about that. <laughs> and then I recast the rod, and then about 11 o'clock last night, I had to take again, and it was another tench. So, pretty good at tench fishing. Not sure about the carp fishing, you know. <sighs> I don't know how I'm going to avoid them. No matter what you fish with, they seem to pick them up whatever bait you're using. It doesn't matter too much. I mean, I've had a few bites. It's not carp. But uh, maybe this morning I might get a carp. I just don't know. Well, I've had nothing so far this morning. I'm sure they're going to get opportunity later. I've got a bit bored, so I decided to do a little um, run through of how I make a cup of tea on the bank. So let's go. I first take my cup and I put in this um, strainer that I've got for um, using loose tea. I put two teaspoons of loose tea in there. What I do next is I put the hot water in and then I let it brew for a little while and then pull it out, put the milk in, give it a little stir, an amazing brew you can have. Loose tea is amazing on the bank. Tea bags are boring. Loose tea is where the carpiness is. That's where you're gonna catch the carp. Or really good when you blank, then you can be really happy having a nice brew. Mmm. Yep. Yep. I need that after not catching a carp so far. Probably ending end up with a blank. But uh, doesn't matter. I've got a lovely cup of tea. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Thank you for watching my little tea on the bank brewing session thing <laughs> yeah um, I'm sure I will get a carp this morning um, it looks really good the sun is coming out sort of it's a bit cloudy this morning as well I'm not entirely sure what's going on if it's gonna be sunny or cloudy this morning um, it was pretty cold last night it went extremely cold like it has been recently a little bit cold um, oh oh Well, can you believe this? I was just doing my amazing brewing time, thinking that I was going to blank. <laughs> and I've got a lovely 16 pound and four ounce, lovely Mid-Kent mirror. <laughs> yes, awesome. What a lovely, stunning looking carp. Small one, but uh, I'm sure there's bigger ones to come. I'm going to be doing much more sessions. Oh, oh, oh! I'm going to be doing a lot more sessions. I'm going to be doing a lot more sessions down here, so hopefully, there'll be bigger ones to come. Yes! Wow! What a good start! All right, it's getting back. Yes! Yes! And yes! Oh, what an amazing looking carp. That was actually caught on the Ronnie rig with the uh, single pop-up. Uh, which is exactly the same as the bottom baits. They're both um, cool candy and uh, basically the pop-ups and the bottom baits are the same but the pop-ups seem to be a little bit more white um, than the bottom baits so that's why I soaked them as, um, to make them a bit more pow and also to just try and bring out those flavours and uh, clearly it's worked. I've had like four tench and I've had a carp. So definitely getting on those baits. 
I'm going to continue with them into the next session and uh, and also might get another bite on this session as well let's see but if not I'll come back again and try that again and hopefully I'll catch then because that is the bait that I think I'm going to stick with now once I've caught once there's no point changing I might as well stick to the same bait and uh, I might move around a few swims though I might try and get somewhere else if not then I'll come back here next time I reckon I, it's definitely a higher um, spot at the moment to get in a bite the person was actually leaving when I turned up, he was fishing the swim next door and he had a carp in the morning in that swim so it's looking good on this sort of section of the lake so uh, yeah looking promising hopefully that helped me catch more carp from here I've caught one this time, I could catch another one and also I've got my bait and I've got my area at the moment so hopefully um, I can keep catching carp from here managed to catch another carp. I managed to catch another tench though, uh, which I thought was carp until it got out of the weed and then realised it was a tench. Yeah, got another tench. <laughs> Looks like you have to catch a lot of tench to finally catch that king carp. <sighs> what can you do? Hopefully next time I catch another stunning carp and maybe a bigger one. Next week I'll be fishing on my syndicate water, so uh, I'm excited about that to try and get back down there to try and get a nice carp out of there as well. Well, a few things have changed since I was here last. Um, there seems to be pads coming up in the middle of the lake. Uh, the water is much clearer than it was before, and I can see a lot more weed around as well. When I turned up, I had a little look around to find out what swims are free. Uh, actually, there wasn't many swims free at all. I mean, some of them are underwater at the moment, and the rest of them were occupied. So, pretty much the only swim I could go in is just the swim I'm in. Uh, it's pretty uh, hard at the moment to try and get into swims. So the only swim that was free was the swim I'm in. There wasn't much choice really. I had to just pick this one. I've decided to do something a bit different. Um, because I'm in this swim and there's a few people along casting out in the middle and a lot, lot more lines in the, in the lake, I decided to fish with two rods and just put them in the margins and just fish slack really and just hope that a cart comes along these tree lines near me and picks up the bait. That's pretty much what I was thinking. Um, one to the right, one to the left, there's two trees. You know, there's a good, good, good chance of something coming along the tree line or hiding in the tree during the day and maybe in the morning or late at night I might get a bite, let's see.
I decided to do something different with my hook baits this time. Um, I both on snowmans. I decided to put both on 15mm cool candy bottom baits, but one is on a yellow 12mm and the other one is on a 10mm cool candy white pop up. Both on Ronnie rigs and they're on clip setups um, with a bit of tubing. Um, I haven't got crazy with the tubing, it's only about a foot and a half to two foot length. I'm, I'm not going crazy with that. Um, yeah, and I'm just slacking off and I'm just literally just staying back and um, not really trying to interfere too much with the swim. Um, one cast each, really, and just feel like that lead down and make sure it's on a clean spot. The baits I'm putting over the top are 15 mil Cool Candy uh, bottom baits, which I've, some of them I was sort of chopping in half and some of them I'm just putting out whole. Um, about a handful over each rod. I don't want to go crazy with the bait. I may put a few more bits in. I did have issues with the ducks trying to eat it as it was going down. Um, but uh, I might put a few more in later. But uh, yeah, hopefully uh, those tactics and me just being a bit cautious and being staying back and just literally just lowering them just in these tree lines is hopefully that'll catch me a carp. Let's see. So far, I've got a couple of hours until it gets dark. I haven't really seen anything, but I'm, that's what I expected really. I didn't expect to see much. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get a bite. It'll probably be in the morning. That seems to be the time on this sort of lake. I've spoken to people since I've been fishing down here, and they've all said morning bites. They have said that they can get a bite during the night, but the majority of the time it is morning. It must be something to do with the clarity of the water because it's really clear. Or just might be the, the carp just in here, just like feeding in the morning and that is it. Um, I haven't really seen anything at all, all my other sessions really. I've seen the odd carp jump since I started fishing here, um, but not many. I don't know how many carp are in this lake. I don't think there's loads in here, so I'm, I'm not expecting to see lots. Maybe in the summer I might see them on the surface, swimming around. Uh, but for now, as it's a bit cooler, <laughs> probably not going to see much. Might see one jump later but we'll see um, hopefully I'll catch something um, hopefully by the morning as well that'd be nice I'm only doing a quick overnight so hopefully I can catch something <laughs> Pretty quiet night last night. Nothing, nothing happened at all. I think I heard a carp jump, but uh, didn't see it. That's about it, really. Pretty cold this morning. Considering it's the end of May, I don't. <laughs> I'm trying my hardest to try and catch a carp at the moment. Um, there might still be a possibility this morning. It's mostly morning bites on here, so let's see if it happens this morning. Otherwise, then I uh, pretty much. Gonna have to come back down again and try again, aren't I? 
I will continue on here and trying to catch something decent out of here. But I'm gonna, I don't know when I was, that's gonna happen. I'll just keep trying and keep going, I suppose. Oh, I made myself a cup of tea, cheer myself up. Oh, yep, that's what I need this morning. Worked last time I was on here. Just sat there, keep drinking tea until I got a bite, really. So, uh, I think that's what I'll probably do this morning and uh, warm myself up at the same time and hopefully I'll get a carp. Let's see. Looks like I've had nothing this session. Um, it's been a bit difficult, it's been busy. Um, I ended up in a swim I didn't really want to be in, but uh, I tried. <laughs> That's all you can do. <sighs> I decided to change over lakes uh, for a little while. Last time I was on the lake next door, this time I'm on this lake. Uh, this one's got a lot more carp in, uh, more of a chance of getting a bite. I have been struggling a little bit on the other one. I did have one, but so far I haven't had much luck on there, apart from Tench, which I've had quite a lot from on that lake. Um, yeah, so I've had a little look around, couldn't really see anything show. You don't really see anything in a till early morning, so I kind of thought, what I need to do is just pick a swim which I like uh, and try and find a feature or either on the far side or just look around to try and see if I can find some area where the carp might be. Well I come to the first swim I uh, didn't really see anything but there is a lot of trees in the water sort of leaning down and uh, it's more of a feature really in this swim. The other swims along from here are mostly open water um, the far side margin, it hasn't got any trees. I decided to do a bit of leading around before I started. Um, because of those trees, I just wanted to find out where the snags were and how far back they were. And I just wanted to figure out where I was going to place the rig. Um, I led it around and found some firm areas in between some trees. Um, there's one band of trees here and then one band of trees next to it. And there's a gap in between, perfect spot for putting a rig. Um, also found another spot as well near a gap in trees. I can use three rods but I couldn't really figure out where I was going to put it. I did lead around quite a bit to try and figure out where I was going to pull it. I didn't want to put too many rigs in those tree areas so I thought oh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, I'm going to do with it. There is a little bay section that carries on down here. Um, it's pretty silty but there could be a carp in there or two. It does go out for quite a bit before it stops. I just decided that I was just going to pull it roughly in the middle, uh, a bit more towards the bank I suppose, it's a bit marginal but it's, a, it's sort of like just beyond this little hanging tree, um, yeah and uh, I'm just going to try in there, maybe there's a carp in there or two today and maybe they'll pop out other tonight or tomorrow morning, I don't know but let's see, so hopefully I catch something.
rigs I'm fishing with are Ronnie rigs. Um, I've got them on the clip set up with uh, tubing. Two of the rods are actually on a cool candy bottom bait, uh, tipped off of half a yellow pop-up. The other one is on a white cool candy 15 mil pop-up, which I wanted to uh, fish above that sill and uh, above all them leaves and debris that's down there. Uh, the other spots are pretty clear, so I decided to fish bait on the bottom. I decided to do a bit of spawning. I've come onto a lake with a few more carp on, and I thought I'd introduce a bit more bait. They spawned a couple of weeks ago on here, uh, so I'm sure they will be looking for some food. Hopefully they'll find my bait <laughs> and I'll get a carp or two. The mix I'm using is 15 mil cool candy. I've also chopped some in half. I've got sweet corn, I've got hemp and maize in there. It, and <laughs> the uh, syrup from the baits have actually uh, come off and it's all syrupy at the moment. Uh, it's very gooey and I think I'm hoping it will attract fish but I didn't really like it. It was going all over me. <laughs> Uh, so um, hopefully that does catch something and uh, hopefully I'll get a cup, let's see. Well, I've had nothing so far, it's been a couple of hours, um, haven't really seen anything jump or anything, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's about it really. Um, I'm just sitting back and uh, watching the water and seeing what happens really. Um, if I get a bite before evening it'll be really good, but if I don't, it'll probably be tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, so hopefully I'll catch something. Got a couple of hours until it goes dark, so... Still could happen, I suppose. Let's see. to report from last night uh, apart from it wouldn't stop raining at three o'clock and I uh, got woken up and I couldn't get back to sleep again <laughs> god did it come down really heavy um, it's only just sort of stop um, didn't hear anything splash or anything jump or anything roll and etc uh, didn't hear nothing to be honest it was quite quiet uh, apart from the road was it which is over there um, on the other side of those trees that was pretty noisy last night. Um, yeah, and I had a mouse running around. That was about the interesting thing that happened last night. Keep running under my bed, uh, probably looking for food. Yeah, nothing really happening at all this morning. Um, again, haven't seen anything jump, roll, or that, or nothing really. I haven't seen anything at all. It's pretty quiet. I really did think that I was going to get a bite this morning. Um, I'm sure I still might. I'm hoping I will anyway, uh, yeah, but not seeing anything doesn't sort of give me that much confidence, um, I'm just hoping that there is carp here somewhere and they might feed within the next sort of hour or two, uh, I'm not going to give it long this morning, uh, I'll be off soon so hopefully I can get a bite within the next couple of hours, so uh, yeah, hopefully I do.
Looks like I've had nothing this session. Just started raining. I thought things couldn't get worse. And uh, well, I've just had coot diving on both my spots and picked up both the rigs. <sighs> Joyous, so fun. <sighs> well, um, looks like I've had all the bad luck on this session. So hopefully next time I have all the good luck and hopefully I'll catch a carp. Well, I'm back fishing on the Mid Kent waters. Um, it has been a little while. I've actually been fishing my syndicate and I've done a long session, which was amazing. Um, I've decided to come back and do a day session instead of doing a night. Uh, one, it was absolutely raining yesterday and I didn't really want to set up in the rain at all. And I thought, oh, I'll come down for the day, move around, uh, fishing swims I've never fished before and uh, try and locate carp as much as I can. I come to the swim round the corner, um, it's quite weedy and it was really difficult to get along here but um, this is a pretty good swim, I don't think many people fish it. Uh, yeah and I've decided to um, cast both my rigs right to the island, um, I felt quite firm as well so um, pretty good spots actually. Um, unless I see anything else, I have a million around in this weed that's near me or maybe milling in close or if I see something jump or something I might change where I'm fishing but for now I've just thought put two on the island so hopefully something happens and I do catch something let's see fish with Ronnie rigs with 12 mil yellow pop-ups. I've got them on a lead clip set up with tubing and I'm basically just casting them wherever I think the fish are and uh, hopefully I'll catch a carp. I'm fishing with a pop-up so it sits above any rubbish that's on the bottom, um, more presentable and uh, more easier to just try and nip a bite. For that. The baits I'm putting over the top are 15 mil uh, cool candy uh, and I've decided just to scatter a few over each rod and not go crazy and try and nip a bite. If I find any marginal spots or anything, I might chop them up and I might actually put some pellets in as well. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna be putting out a few boilies over each hook bay and see what happens. Um, I'm gonna be changing swims, changing tactics all day. So I thought, beginning, start on the bottom, uh, yellow pop up, over a couple of boilies, see if anything happens. So hopefully it does. <laughs> I've been looking around to see if I can see anything um, and I was kind of also thinking about how long I was going to stay for uh, in this swim. I was thinking about another half an hour maybe but I think I might give it another hour uh, because I've seen a carp jump. Um, it has jumped to my left um, but the other thing is it's just behind a tree and there's tons of weed there so I'll never be able to get rigged out. I'd have to clear all the weed out and by the time I do that the carp's gone. 
Um, so the margin to my right is actually clear. It's got nothing in front of it. There's a little bit of weed just behind it, but there's nothing in front of where the hanging tree is to my right, actually. So I thought about putting some bait in there. Um, I've just put a couple of handfuls of like uh, mid-sized pellets and I put a few boilies in there um, and I'm probably going to bring one of the rods in a little bit and drop it in there for a little while and see what happens really. Like I said I've literally just seen a carp jump on the margins to my left so the, if it comes out of that weed it may continue down the margins and maybe I'll get a bite on the right hand side. Just before I was going to put some bait in, I did notice a little movement under the water and then a load of bubbles come up. So it might be weed, it also might be a carp, you never know. Probably going to stay here for another hour and then I'm going to move over to the other lake. Um, it's a little bit harder that lake, it's got less uh, carp in it but it has got some really big carp in it as well. So um, if I do find one then it'll be worth it. Hopefully something happens and hopefully I do catch. If I don't, I'll move and try and make an opportunity somewhere else. Well, I've moved to the other lake and uh, the weed has gone absolutely crazy in here. Um, a couple of weeks ago when I was down, it did look a little bit weedy, but it's supersonic weed in here. It's got absolutely crazy. It's everywhere. Um, it's weed on the bottom, but grassy weed on the bottom, and then you've got all this weed on the surface as well, uh, which is not making it easy. Normally if I'm going to fish a weedy area, I normally want to do a night because I'm probably going to make a lot of disturbance, like clearing a spot and stuff like that, or looking for a spot. Uh, yeah, so I didn't know what to do, but I've set up in a swim that I can look over the lake quite a bit um, and I've already seen a couple of carp as well. I've seen one in the real thick weed, I've seen one literally to my left, sort of like in between um, where these trees are and sort of where the really thick weed is, it's sort of in the, in the middle milling around and I've seen one to my right as well which is really good but it's so thick in that yeah, to my right I can't even get a rig in there at all. When I got into the swim I did see a clear spot underneath this tree to my left, um, it is shallow um, but it's clear so I thought straight away I'm going to put a rig there. So I put a few bits of bait in there. I have had a coot dive on me, but um, it seems to have gone away since then. Um, the other rod didn't know what to do until I saw a carp milling around in the middle. And what I've done is I've tied up a really, really long hinge stiff rig. Um, and I've gone for the lightest lead I've got as well. And um, I've the same, same pop up, but uh, I've pulled it where the sort of between there's weed and then there's little gaps in the weed but I've, I don't know exactly where it's landed because I didn't want to do too many casts um, but I wanted a hook bait that was going to be centered right on top of that weed um, which is a hinge stiff rig is much better for that than a Ronnie rig um, just because uh, I think it's going to be a higher pop up and it's going to stand up a little bit and uh, I have still seen the carp milling around down there as well um, I've also seen another one further on in the weed so it's looking promising in this swim I've seen at least three carp already in here so uh, you never know I might get something in the last sort of couple of hours of my session I'm going to look around for opportunities um, and if I see any carp showing on the other side of the lake or any other swim I might move uh, but at the moment I'm planning on just staying here and seeing what happens really so uh, hopefully I do catch something Looks like I'm not going to get anything today. I've tried really hard. I've fished two different lakes. I've seen plenty of carp, but they're mostly in the weed, not really doing anything. They don't seem to be one to feed at the moment. I've tried. What can you do? Well, I'm finally back on this lake, 
Um, it's been a little while since I've actually been on here. Uh, a lot of weed has come onto this lake. Also, it was closed for a few times for spawning, so I haven't really had many sessions on here. I did do half a day session and I came to this swim. I did see a few carp, but I didn't have anything. That is the reason why I wanted to come to this exact swim, because I knew that there was carp here. There were carp here last time, and they weren't that far out as well. So I knew that they were going to eventually be here at some point. Um, so far, being in the swim for a good couple of hours, I've actually seen um, mostly like roach and a few tench, but I haven't actually seen any carp. That is a bit of a risk to come to the swim that I haven't actually seen any carp in, but I know for a fact they're going to turn up at some point. Maybe this evening or maybe in the morning they might appear here, but um, they sort of appear uh, in this area and then they sort of fade off after a while so they stay for a very short period of time um, it is a lot shallower on this part of the lake so um, that might be the reason it looks pretty good at the moment there has been some um, people down here raking out some areas so um, it makes it a little bit more easy for me I decided to put one of my rods out into the clearing in front of me um, it goes about 15 feet out from me and then it's sort of clear for another maybe 20 feet and then it hits weed again um, so it is a bit of a, um, a big area that's clear out there which is really good because if I do get a carp out there at least I can more likely to land it um, and get it away from the weed beds and stuff like that um, it's a pretty good spot um, it's a little bit silty but it's not too bad it looks good to me the other rod I've actually put to my right um, it's a clearing that's not massive but it's big enough to put a rig in there is a few bits of weed in there um, but mostly just silty on the bottom and uh, felt quite soft as well so but I'm still happy with it it's a clear area where I can present a rig so hopefully uh, one of them spots pays off for me and I get a carp let's see I decided to put Ronnie rigs on both my rods on a lead clip with a bit of tubing. I'm fishing the something a bit different on both my rods. I'm fishing 10 mil baits on each one. One is a 10 mil white cool candy pop-up. The other bait is a 10 mil light orange pop-up that's actually more like a wafter. Um, when I tested it on the bottom, it sort of wafted, it sort of actually popped up, which is brilliant because the spot that I've picked for that one is mostly clear and it feels reasonably firm. There's a little bit of silt in there, but there's not much weed and stuff on the bottom there, so it's pretty good. The other one is actually set to pop up. That's on an area that's much more softer and silt, and also there is a odd little bit of weed in there, so I want to make sure my bait is presented on top of that. The spawn mix I'm using is actually hemp, maple peas, and chopped boilies. 
I didn't want to go too crazy with the bait and I also wanted to make sure that those baits were brown and very dull in colour because I don't really want to attract any swans or any birds to dive on it. It's really clear in this lake and uh, I think that if they see any kind of yellow on the bottom and stuff like that I think they're going to dive down and eat all of it. I have had a few occurrences where they've picked up the rig or they've picked up, gone down and picked up some sweet corn and bits and bobs off the bottom and then picked my rig up. So um, I've decided to go for dull baits this time and um, my hook baits are actually quite stand out, they're quite bright but my actual loose feed is a lot more dull and they're le less likely to be picked up by birds. I've decided to put a few spoms on each spot, uh, I want to see if I get a tench or anything else on it, if I do I may change to a slightly bigger bait. Um, but for now, I'd rather stick with the small bait because it doesn't really matter what I put on, it's still going to be picked up by like tench and maybe even roach in here. There's some big roach, I've seen them swimming around already. Um, yeah, so I hope I don't get picked up by one of them. Yeah, so we'll see. Hopefully I'll get something and um, I'm really looking forward to this session because um, the weed is up, um, good conditions. I'm hoping to get a carp. Let's see. happened so far um, apart from a few roach and a few tents swimming around out there um, yeah nothing's happening uh, a few birds have gone from a line that's about it really yeah so I think that the chance of getting a bite will probably be in the morning I'll probably get up really early and um, see if I can see anything jump or roll um, out in the swim um, and uh, hopefully I'll get a carp in the morning and that'd be brilliant so uh, Hopefully I do. So far the only thing that's happened was uh, I had a bite about one o'clock in the morning I think it was, a um, little indication and I saw the tip bend browned and uh, I thought, oh, I don't know what that is, uh, might be a tent or something, picked it up and um, it was in the weed and sort of came, the hook just sort of pulled out eventually and uh, nothing on the end at all. My best guess is like a roach or um, maybe a small tent or something, it's picked it up and moved the rig into the weed and that, that was it really. Uh, nothing's happened. This morning uh, I thought I was going to get a bite maybe like first hour, first light maybe but um, so far nothing. Um, I haven't really seen anything. I did hear one carp jump further down the lake and that is it really. Well I reckon I've got a little bit longer in, to get a bite really. Um, usually once it gets past about 8 o'clock you've got no chance of getting a bite at all. Um, so I'm just gonna see what happens really and um, I'm gonna keep looking at the lake and um, checking out uh, some spots for maybe next time and stuff like that see if I can see anything jump or show um, but so far what I've seen is a few little roach um, that's about it jumping this morning so yeah not a huge amounts happening on the old jumping or rolling or anything front but um, I still think they could be here and I still think they might turn up at some point. They do come through here quite often so there's always a chance. So uh, yeah, we'll see what happens and uh, hopefully I'll get something this morning. Yeah, that'd be really good. I'm not going to get anything on this session 
even more of an insult, a carp actually swam over both my spots and then swam back over them again and didn't even stop. So um, I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm going to have to try something new next time and maybe I might be able to figure out the way of catching these carp but um, they're being a bit tricky at the moment. I've been here about an hour and I've seen over 12 carp swimming up and down right in front of me which is a really good sign. Um, I kind of wanted to know what I was going to do uh, when I was turning up and um, I weren't sure what swim to go in. I've actually come into the same swim I fished last time, I only saw one carp within like 24 hours of fishing here and I've only been here an hour and I've seen 12 carp. This is definitely the swim I want to be in, you know, it only takes one of those carp to be a bit daft and pick up the hook bait and uh, then I get to have a carp landing. <laughs> this is definitely the swim I want to be in, it's only going to take one of those carp to dive down and I'll, I'll definitely have a bite. Um, but you never know um, what's gonna happen tonight and tomorrow morning may change things, but for now, I'm still seeing them swimming up and down. So uh, there's definitely a good chance. I'm trying to figure out where to put some hook baits. Um, I have seen plenty of carp just beyond where the weed is. Um, it was raked out in the open. Um, so basically what I'm doing is I'm fishing right up, like right along where the weed is. Most people would probably fish them more further, but I've seen the majority of the carp swimming right up and down, right close to the weed. Um, I suppose they're, they're, they're hiding in that weed and there's plenty of food and naturals in there, and it's a really good hiding spot as well. They can just hide in there and then you know, don't get fished for really that much um, because it's so thick along the surface. Uh, it's so dense. <laughs> yeah, you have to literally just rake out a whole spot and it'll probably take you half a day just to do that. So um, I've decided to not bother raking out, fish where I've got clear areas in front of me, but also where I've seen the most carp swimming up and down. Well, it would be really nice to get one carp at least on this session. Uh, it's been really difficult the last couple of sessions I've been down. Um, haven't really had anything for a while, uh, but this time i seen carp, give me more confidence, so hopefully I'll catch something. I'm using a Ronnie rigs. In the past I've been using a uh, lead clip with tubing. Um, you know I had to use leaders here so um, I had to use tubing and lead clip was pretty much the only thing I had. Uh, inline you can use but it's so silty and weedy I didn't really want to use that and I couldn't really do helicopter rig and that's my favourite thing to do. To be honest I prefer helicopter rigs at a mall. Corda have come up with this new helicopter setup uh, for tubing which is, looks really good and uh, because I like helicopter setups I decided to get it because I just think they have better presentation over weed and silk. All you gotta do is move that bead up and you're fishing really because everything can sink into the bottom and then your hook bait is sitting up above. Uh, with the lead clip, as soon as the lead goes in, it pushes the lead clip up, directly upwards and your rig is sticking straight up and sort of bending to get to the hook bait so it sort of like creates like a loop and uh, it just looks awful, it looks like it just all gone down a big heap so uh, <laughs> that's the reason I don't like lead clips as much when the bottom's a bit more firmer I prefer using a lead clip as well because I think it has a better presentation over sort of firmer ground but when it's on a softer silty weedy 
area I just think sometimes it can be dragged down quite a bit using this uh, helicopter setup has given me a little bit more confidence and also it's safe which is really good the hook baits I'm using are cool candy 15 mil pop-ups um, I actually caught the only carp so far from here on those and I decided to try other hook baits and haven't had anything so um, I've come back to the same hook baits uh, which was a bit daft really because I had a carp on it so I might as well stack with it um, but I've come back and uh, decided to go with them again and uh, if I catch a carp this time then I don't think there's anything else I need to do I'll just stay to the same thing I did try out particles and little hook baits and things but nothing's really happened on those the bottom baits I'm putting out over the top are cool candy 15 millers um, I've also soaked them in a bit of water just so they're a bit softer and they don't take on any silt in the lake uh, when you put hard baits in when they're puffing up on the bottom they suck in all the seal and they smell horrible um, but if you soak them in water overnight um, they pump out liquid and that will stop it from soaking up any seal 20 minutes after casting my rods out I um, hadn't seen a cup for a while and then I suddenly saw one swimming out of nowhere it stopped over one of my rigs dived down and then spooked I'm not entirely sure what that was about, but he definitely saw my hook bait and uh, definitely had a little go for it, but um, yeah, sort of spooked off it. Doesn't matter too much, there's plenty of carp I've seen swimming up and down. I'm sure one of them will pick up the rig soon. Probably the best chance to be getting a bite, probably be tomorrow morning, so hopefully I catch something by then. Um, hopefully I do, because uh, it'd be nice to get a carp. <laughs> hours well, nothing's really happened um, I've seen three carp I saw one swim out in the middle and I saw two together swim straight over the top of where my rigs are uh, but I think they're more interested in uh, swimming around on the surface uh, it's really weedy out there so I don't really want to fish zigs or anything um, and there wasn't really opportunity for on the surface because there's only like the odd one or two it's not really anything I can get going or anything so um, fishing on the bottom is pretty much all I've got um, but I'm still thinking that uh, tomorrow morning will happen uh, there's been a lot of carp here today um, I've seen nearly 15 carp already so that's quite a lot considering I've only ever seen like two or three um, in over on my other sessions and I caught one so um, seeing like nearly 15 carp in this area means that I've got a really good chance of getting a bite I've also heard that a few carp are starting to come out recently as well, which is really good because it hasn't been doing that well. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to tomorrow morning, hopefully get a carp. That'd be nice, really. Uh, it's just been difficult and I've been putting in a few sessions on here and nothing's really happened, but I'm sure everything will happen tomorrow morning. <laughs> Let's hope. Well, nothing happened last night apart from a massive storm about five o'clock in the morning, uh, lightning, thunder, really, really heavy rain. I uh, couldn't really get out of the bivvy. I ended up just staying in there and just waiting until it went. I was hoping that it was gonna just, just go because I just thought, no way I'm gonna be able to fish in this. I didn't know what to do. If I had to buy it, I wouldn't have uh, been able to uh, play it because I would have probably been hit by lightning. So that would have been great. About an hour after first light, I did notice a few carp 
um, returning into the open water bit where I'm fishing. I've seen over 15 carp. A few of them have dived down and picked up the odd bait, but nothing's really got going. Um, they've had like one, maybe two, and they just sort of disappeared. Uh, I had a few carp go near my hook bait and spook, so I was just thinking maybe because it's popped up or maybe because it was white. I've changed the hook baits to wafter hook bait. I didn't want the hook bait sitting on all the rubbish on the bottom and I didn't want it soaking up all the seal and I didn't want it to be like really smelly and horrible and then not get a bite this morning. So the reason I stuck to pop-ups is because I thought they'd be more presentable on this bottom. There's lots of seal and bits of weed and all sorts of like bits on the bottom. So I thought they'd be more presentable on there, but um, Clearly the carp are spooking from it, something wrong with it, they definitely can notice something. I decided to put one on a snowman, cool candy bottom bay and a cool candy pop up but it's a 10mm pop up. Uh, and on the other one is actually a cool candy bottom bait. I've actually drilled it out and I've plugged it with a pop up, a yellow pop up uh, that I've sort of trimmed down the edges and I've just shoved it in. Uh, one of my favourite hook baits is boiling plastic corn, but you can't use plastics on here, so um, I've decided to try something a bit different. It's something new that I've just started to come up with to, to replace that hook bait. Um, so I've recast them, put a few fresh hook baits over each one. I didn't want to put too much because I really put bait in last night. They've eaten a few bits and bobs, but nothing too much. Um, yeah, so um, hopefully the change will make a difference and maybe I'll get something. Let's see. Looks like I've had nothing this session. It's been really difficult. I've seen loads and loads of carp, but they just don't really want to feed that much. They're picking up the odd boilie, and uh, what, what can you do? I have no idea what I have to do to catch these carp. It's the water is so clear, and they're just spooking from everything. <sighs> what can you do? Well, I had a little look around when I turned up. Um, the swim that I fished last time I was here was free. Um, but there was a lot more weed in it, a lot more had got pushed in front of it and I would have been there hours and hours trying to rake it out. So I decided to fish another swim, I uh, came to the next swim along and there's no one in it so I've jumped straight into it. I've never actually fished this swim before. Uh, this swim was underwater for a little while, um, there's natural springs that feed the lake and uh, there was a lot of water in uh, in spring and uh, it was mostly underwater this one and then the weed came up and it was really really thick in this swim so I haven't been able to come in here but um, it seemed to have cleared itself or I don't know what's happened, I don't know if someone's come down there and cleared it or it's just moved around and actually moved into the swim next door most of it, it looks like some of it has. Uh, but I don't know where the rest of it's gone and maybe they've been raking it, I don't know. Other people, maybe. I led it around trying to find out what's in front of me. Um, and there's weeds to my left, there's a lot of it, um, into the next sort of swim into the rest of the lake. So um, I tried to have a look around there because I've seen carp in the past um, jumping in this particular area. Um, but it was so much weed here you couldn't put a rig at all in there. So um, that's the reason why I was having a look at there first. Um, there's a lot of um, open water out in front of me that's clear but um, I couldn't really find anything interesting out there. Um, but I did find something really interesting which was a little teeny gravel spot. Uh, most of it is silty, so finding something that clear, it was only small, um, just big enough to put a rig on, but maybe it's carp feeding on it, maybe it was birds feeding on it, I don't know, but it's worth trying for tonight um, in that spot. You never know, might do something. Uh, and then the other rod I decided to put up to my right, just in front of a tree, 
Um, it's a feature and it's close in as well, so it's a little bit silty. It's a feature, so it's worth trying. So hopefully, um, coming to a different swim, I've got one close in and one further out, so it's a bit different than last time. Last time I was sort of flicking them out to where I was seeing the carp. I know for a fact a lot of carp do come through here um, because I've been fishing the swim next door and uh, they've been swimming up and down in front of that swim. So I do know that they come in front of here as well and they sort of come along and then end up into the shallow water early morning really. So um, that's the sort of time I'm expecting to see them. You never know, I might see one this evening. Sometimes you do spot them now and then, but um, most of the time it's early morning, they come up here and they just come along this shallower water and uh, yeah, they do tend to feed now and then. <laughs> I can't seem to get one to pick my rig up, but um, yeah, they do. I've seen them feeding on natural and things like that. So uh, yeah, so hopefully I'll catch a carp. Let's see. I'm fishing running rigs on both of my rods. I've got them on a helicopter tubing setup. Um, the reason I've won for the helicopters, uh, recently I um, started re wondering what was happening with my clip rigs that I was using in here. Um, and I was a bit worried that they were sinking in the seal, the leads were sinking in, the rigs were sitting funny. Um, but I've changed over to helicopter because um, I, I prefer helicopter rigs and I think they present the rig much better. My hook baits are a little bit different. Uh, recently I've been using pop-ups. Um, I did have a few carp spooking from it. So I've changed the wafter hook baits. Um, I've got one on a Cool Candy 50 miller, which I've drilled about halfway through and I've plugged it with a 12 mil yellow pop-up and I've sort of shaved down the size and then pull it inside of it and uh, it looks really good. Um, it's a wafter but also you get that little yellow little topper which is really good. Something a bit I've been playing around with recently to try and um, get around the fact that I can't use plastics here and normally I would want to put a yellow plastic on top of it. Uh, yellow plastic corn obviously um, but I can't do that. So I've been playing around with this bait recently and um, I think I've finally got it perfect and uh, sitting really nice. The other one is a 14 mil Poloni wafter, um, which is a very dull colour. Um, last time I did have trouble with the white hook baits that I think they were spooking from, either because it was popped up or because it was really white and bright. So I've gone for really dull baits. Um, the other one has got a little colour tipper on it, but this one is just a plain wafter that's sort of very dull and um, hopefully that it won't um, spook any carp from it. And, it looks pretty good on the bottom. It's a nice little bait. Um, hopefully it'll catch me a carp. <laughs> uh, I put the Plony Wafter to the right um, under the tree. 
because it's got a lot of oil and stuff in it, it's going to leak off. Um, it's more likely to not take up any seal that's, gonna, that's on the bottom. I don't really want it sucking up any seal and just smelling really funny. So I thought that would be the best bait for that spot. And the other one, obviously, I've put in the, um, the little wafter um, with the drill that pop up inside of it on the little clear area out into the middle. Um, well, out further on anyway. Um, that's the reason that's the reason I've chose those hook baits and the reason I put them on those spots. Um, bait that I'm putting over the top is a little bit different um, than I've been doing recently as well. I've just put mixed size pellets um, and a couple of half boilies and I've done two spoms over each rig and that is it. So I haven't gone crazy with the bait, I've kept it really simple, really light um, and I thought I'd have a go at pellets as well and see if that makes any difference as well. Hopefully it works and hopefully I'll get a carp. Well, it's been a couple of hours. Um, I haven't really seen anything at all. Um, I wasn't really expecting anything, to be honest. I wasn't expecting to see nothing until tomorrow morning, really. That's when I can start seeing them. Uh, swimming around, maybe they might jump out, I don't know. But um, in previous sessions at night, I've heard fish jump. I think they're carp. Um, they sound pretty big, like big splashes and stuff. And that was roughly in this sort of area. I'm not entirely sure exactly where it was because obviously I couldn't really see anything but I definitely heard some massive splashes uh, last session and a couple of sessions um, previous as well I've heard big splashes down this sort of side of the lake I have had a few issues with the coots they have found one of my spots the one closer in they, they've they uh, somehow seen everything on the bottom and dived down and they're picking a few bits up <sighs> nothing I can do about it really um, you know I'm just it's just pellets and a few top boilies. There's nothing really blatant on that area, but they're still diving down. They're still trying to pick up baits. Yeah, so I've got um, about an hour left of light, and then and then I'll see what happens. Really, probably I'll get a bite in the morning. Yeah, let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> I finally had another bite. Um, this one's about £10. Uh, not a big one, but uh, it's been really hard. Um, I've had two pickups by a tench, and uh, also I've had uh, coots diving on me, picking up the rig. Uh, about 10 minutes before I had this one, I had a coot pick it up, and I was, had to sort it all out, and I recast it, and 30 seconds later, this one went off. <laughs> Literally just landed, and it went off. Yeah. Right, I'm going to get him back and then uh, get the rod back out and I reckon there could be a chance for another one. Alright, oh, let's go.
Well, there's a couple of things I didn't mention uh, when I had that carp. One is the bait was actually on a bottom bait drilled out with a little um, pop-up in it um, on that hard spot that I found that I th thought there might be carp might be feeding, fed on it or maybe it was birds, I wasn't entirely sure. Um, I think it's a bit of both because I've had both. I've had birds on it and I've also had a carp on it so definitely a good spot. I can bring those tactics away with me as well like I can think about what I'm going to do next. Um, I think probably more likely I'm going to put both on that hook bait next time and stick with the same sort of pellets and a few chopped boilies and stuff like that. So continue with that and uh, see what happens. I've got about an hour left of my uh, morning bite time so hopefully I'll get something else. You never know. <laughs> Well, haven't managed to get anything else, but at least I've had that carp. I haven't had another blank, which is really good. Um, if you're wondering why I was wearing my waders when I had that carp, I managed to weed me up really badly in close and had to get out there and de-weed it and get it in the net which was a pain but you know <laughs> at least I had my waders with me and managed to get it out. Well I've come back to the same swim I fished last time when I was on here. This is the only area that I've caught carp so far um, for a little while anyway. Um, it's been quite a while since I've had one. Having one, my last session here definitely um, made me a bit more confident of what I was doing and, and a bit more about where I was fishing and where I was going to catch them from. Yeah, like I said, I've come back into the same swim I fished last time. I had a little look around to see what I could see in front of me because the weed in here was really bad, but at the moment it seems to be clearing. So every time I come here, it's completely different. Sometimes it's really, really, really weedy and sometimes it's moving off and it's the whole swim has completely got no weed in it whatsoever. So I had a little look and most of the weed is gone in this swim which is really good. It's actually a bit more of a channel out in front of me of uh, weed that's cleared and um, I can finally see the bar that's actually in here. I couldn't see it before because there was so much weed and I've, I now realise that I was actually, last time I was fishing here, I was actually fishing just on the bar um, because there was so much weed I couldn't actually see it where it was um, but I found firmer ground and I thought that that was just a firmer area. It turns out that it's a raised bar there's sort of only a foot on top of it of water it's really shallow and i think that is the reason why i picked up my birds constantly on that spot i did get a carp on it but now i'm thinking yeah <laughs> uh, so i have come a little bit more further back than i did last time um, i've come at least a foot back from where i was fishing um, so I'm hoping that will um, deter the birds a little bit. I've fished two rods on the same spot because that produced um, a couple of tench and a carp and a few birds as well. But uh, I've decided to put two rods on this this time. Um, I am allowed to use three rods um, but I haven't been able to use it because it's been so weedy the lakes and I just haven't been able to figure out where I was going to put it. So I never actually pull it out at any time when I was fishing previously. But now the weed is completely clear and I'm seeing more areas I can put rigs and um, so I'm seeing more areas of an opportunity to put a third rod out. So I put the third rod out where roughly where I put it before but I've put it a little bit more further because um, when I brought in um, couple of times it was all weedy and leafy so I didn't really uh, want to go too close to this tree that's to the right of me where it's slightly more firmer um, it's not in close anymore which is a disappointment because you know you're gonna get bites in that margin that's why it looks really good but I think I need to be on a slightly firmer ground and uh, make my rig and my bait presentable on top of it so um, that's what I've done with that one um, having two rods on the spot that I caught carp last time and come a little bit more back, stop them birds diving on me. Hopefully it'll produce more than one carp or um, maybe a bigger one. Let's hope.
using Ronnie Riggs on helicopter tubing setup. Um, I started using it a couple of sessions ago and I have actually really enjoyed using it at the moment um, because I've managed to get that hook bait away from that lead. Um, I feel much more confident my rig has not been dragged into the uh, silt that's in here. There's a lot of it in here and there's bits of weed and all sorts of stuff on the bottom. My hook baits are the same lot as last time but two of them are on the drilled out bottom bait that I've actually plugged with a uh, trimmed down yellow pop-up so it's sort of have a little bit of yellow sticking up at the top um, and that is something that um, I like doing on most lakes I like to have a little bit of color on top I usually use plastic corn but you can't use it here so that's how I've got around it and uh, also it's got more buoyancy for the Ronnie rig which you need the other bait is a plony wafter and what I've done is I put one out on plony wafter and one out on the little um, drilled down uh, pop up inside the bottom bait on the baited spot that I've uh, put out which is near the bar um, and the other one is the same hook bait. I decided to try something a bit different on that bar because of the birds I had problems with last time. If a bird dives down, I pick just that one up, what I'll do is I'll change it to a plony wafter and hopefully they are less likely to see it. So um, that, the only reason I've put it back on there is because that's the one that had the carp on last time. So that is the reason I've sort of stuck with that for now. And I'm gonna see what happens. There's a lot of birds around, so I'm hoping they don't dive on my spot. I did put a couple of spoms out over each spot, um, just a couple, I haven't gone crazy with the bait, it's just um, what I've done is I've put out some chop boilies and sort of mixed sized pellets really. Um, I've cut down on the pellets that are in there a little bit from last time, I've taken out anything that's too bright, uh, I'm, again I'm trying to avoid those birds from diving down. So I've put a few spoms on each one, you know that's all it needs, um, the carp are moving around all the time, I've already seen uh, at least two carp and I've spoken to someone that's in at least uh, four or five carp in two different areas really but um, he's seen them and they're around and they seem to be moving quite a bit at the moment so hopefully uh, it's not too long until I get a bite. Let's see. been a couple of hours nothing's really happened um, apart from what I saw a carp um, looked around about sort of 20 pound I think it was a common uh, swam straight with a rig and didn't want to do anything I'm not really expecting anything until the morning um, yeah everything comes alive in the morning and then the rest of the day nothing happens they sort of most of the species in here and the carp seem to just not do anything all day and then first thing in the morning they go crazy and they start feeding so I think that is the time where I'm gonna get something oh I've had a few coot issues uh, one's dived down picked up one and a half boilies and then dived down and picked up my rig which was on the baited area with the two rods um, he's picked up the one with the yellow on it so I've changed it to a plony wafter and since then I haven't really had that much um, problems with them diving on that spot They've been diving on the other spot, uh, which is on the right as well. Um, they've pretty much eaten all the half boilies and things like that. I don't think they've picked up the rig. Um, I might just put a few whole ones around it or something later uh, when it gets a bit dark because they don't seem to do huge amounts during the dark. <laughs> the birds don't really do anything at all. They just sort of go away somewhere else and don't really come back until the morning and then they start bothering you and start diving all over your spots when you when you're expecting to get a bite so uh, yeah <laughs> um, but I am really confident still I still think there's a good chance of me getting something uh, probably get it in the morning but let's see <laughs> Thank you. 
What a crazy, crazy night. I spent most of the night fighting off coots or catching tench. <laughs> I had four takes um, and I landed two of the tench. Uh, the other two managed to get rid of the rig um, in the weed. Um, yeah, it was really fun. I enjoyed it. Um, I got absolutely attacked by coots just as it was getting dark and um, just into dark they were properly going for it and just eating everything and then attacking all the rigs and the baits. I had to recast all the rods. Uh, yeah, so that was fun. And then all the weed decided to dislodge from uh, further down the lake and float all the way along here. So there's patches of weed all over the place floating on the surface. Um, it's sort of drifting down. Um, some of it has drifted off and gone further up the lake, but um, it's mostly on the surface, so it's not too bad. As long as I get my line round it, it's not too bad. But um, it sort of dislodged, I think it's maybe because it was a bit of wind um, yesterday and um, it may have moved it. Oh, great. Um, I've got at the moment, I've got a coop diving on my spot again. I've uh, been attacked a couple of times this morning as well. Um, I've seen one carp in the weed um, further down the lake, I can see from here, I, I saw it and then it spooked. It managed to see me from like 30 feet away, so yeah, it's not great at the moment. Yeah, nothing really happened apart from cooped this morning, so that's it. So that's my morning and um, I'm hoping that all that disturbance is not too bad and hopefully at some point in the next couple of hours a cop picks up one of my rigs if if not then I tried I really have tried I've recast the rods constantly changing all the hook baits and refreshing them and making sure they're not all ruined and damaged and everything um, because of the coots and the tench and all the other things that have been moved and picked up and yeah so it's been in a right old night, I haven't had huge amounts of sleep at all, probably had like an hour or two sleep all night um, so I'm hoping it'll, it'll be worth it all when I get a take in the next sort of couple of hours <sighs> so let's see Well, it looks like I'm not going to get a carp in this session. Um, plenty of tench and I've caught plenty of coots as well, but um, no carp. It's been really hard. Um, looks like I've just had all the bad luck. Well, I'm back down fishing on the mid Ken waters. Things have definitely changed since the last time I was here. Autumn is uh, getting along nicely. <laughs> uh, the leaves are falling off. A lot of the weed has gone actually in the lake. Um, quite a lot to be honest. There was so much weed in this swim before um, I couldn't even get in here at all. Um, I saw a few people did try and rake it out and um, I didn't even attempt to do it because I could see people trying uh, in here and um, not getting very far. It was really thick and uh, pretty much where the weed started really so it's been a while since I've been in this swim. Uh, you know I've been looking around to see if I can see anything um, but the majority of the time it's actually early morning where you start seeing them. I had a little lead around to try and find out what was in front of me. Um, there's quite a lot of big trees and snags at the back and um, that's quite a good feature in this swim. I caught my first carp from here on, on this exact swim. I kind of knew where I was roughly going to go. I thought I'd find out because there's been a lot of weed in the lake so I just and a lot of silk to be honest um, so I was just trying to find out what was out there there's like three trees out there. there's one big tree that's leaning over one little one and then there's one that's sort of on the end it's sort of a dead tree that's leaning in the water it's quite a big feature along the far side so I started leading around to the right and I was trying trying to aim between the sort of the middle one because that is the one I had to bite from when in spring um, it's the last time I managed to get into this swim and it was really silty and really weedy. So I started casting it around to the left uh, between the trees and it's actually clear. It's sort of got edge on one tree and it's clear all out in the gap and then it's clear just on the corner 
of the next one. So my plan is to probably pop one to the right and one to the left so they're both next to these trees. Um, but I might actually put some bait in between because it's firm all the way along. So um, yeah, that's probably going to be my plan for that spot. I've already put in a couple of spawns. I just wanted to see what the birds were going to do because I've had problems the last couple of sessions with coots constantly diving on the spot. Yeah, so I put some bait in and they're diving all over it. They're absolutely loving it. I did think they'd be able to see it as clearly as they would um, when like boilies and uh, pellets and stuff like that, but um, they clearly are seeing the spot. I've decided not to bother casting in because I'm just going to get picked up by coots constantly. I might wait until it gets a little bit dark um, and then put some more bait in and I probably will cast the rods in then um, because I'm not getting cooted like last time. Last time they wouldn't stop right up until just dark and then they stopped completely and then the tension took over so uh, yeah I definitely think I'll probably get a tension in the night. You never know, you know, waiting it out maybe and putting a bit of bait in even though the coots are diving on it. It may just bring in those carp in and um, less disturbance in the swim. Uh, you never know, but um, I'll start by casting the rods in and then I might put some bait in just on dark. So, um, yeah, hopefully I won't get cooted this time. Until the morning and then I'll coot. <laughs> they'll be all over me like crazy. So, um, yeah, hopefully um, something happens when I eventually cast out. <laughs> My rigs uh, for this session is going to stay the same. I've got a helicopter tubing set up on the Ronnie rigs for both of them. I've also um, changed my hook bait for this session and my bait that I'm baiting up over the top. Now, um, previously I've been doing boilies, I've been doing pellets, and I've only really had one. Um, I tried a bit of parkour as well, and that didn't really pay off that well. Um, I just got tension. Um, birds diving on me so that didn't really work that well. I decided to fish with naturals this time and I'll probably be doing it continuously over the autumn and into the winter. Um, I think that's gonna be my best chance, gonna be less naturals in the lake and hopefully the carp will be a bit more um, less cautious on it and hopefully I'll get a few more bites. That's my hope anyway. My hook bait is gonna be maggots but I kind of want it to sit off the bottom a little bit. I don't want it to go too close to the bottom. I want it to have a little bit of buoyancy to it. So I've got a half, a homemade dumbbell pop-up, um, which I've just trimmed a little bit off of it. And um, I'm gonna tip that off with maggots. Sorry, I'm just watching birds on my spot. Yeah, coots are diving all over it. I'm gonna be tipping it off with maggots, so that will add a little bit extra weight to it. Um, plus it's on the Ronnie rig so it's quite heavy so it's more likely going to be a wafter um, because they're only small the little dumbbells that I've got. My spawn mix is actually two different mixes. Um, I've got one is casters, crushed up boilies and um, what I've done is I've put them in water because uh, casters tend to float when they dry out so putting them in water will stop them from doing that. Also, um, I've put in some molasses inside that as well, just to add a bit more darker colour to the to the casters as well as um, the crushed up boilie I put in there. Um, I'm trying to avoid the birds from diving on me, so I'm trying everything. I put just put a few half boilies in there as well, uh, and the other mix is actually maggots, a little bit of ground bait crushed up boily and I've put a few small little pellets in there as well. The thinking behind doing both is the fact is I'm going to be fishing with maggots as my hook bait um, and I didn't want to just feed casters and then fish with maggots on the hook bait. If the coots that turn out to be diving on the maggots, which I think they may be, I'm not entirely sure, I'm probably going to stop feeding maggots and just feed the casters next time. I come down, that's the reason I'm playing around with it and into that sort of mid-autumn into winter so I'm just seeing what's going to happen on, on the lake um, um, but at the moment I'm going to try both and uh, I'm going to put in a lot more bait in just before it gets dark um, I put in about five 
two on each spot and then one in the middle between it and then probably I'll probably put in another maybe I don't know I, I reckon I'm probably going to put in another five or six I'm going to spread it between where the rigs are going to go and between it as well so there's like a bait line in between each area because it's quite clear all along there and I think I'm just going to spread it as much as possible um, so hopefully when a carp comes past he sees that and dives down as a good munch hopefully been a couple of hours finally decided to cast in the coots have been diving on my spot that I put a little bit of bait in constantly they've just started to slow down in their dives on the spot either they've eaten most of the bait or absolutely crazy they're just diving on it constantly that's the reason I decided not to put my rigs in just yet I thought I'd give it a good couple of hours and see what happens I haven't really seen any carp or anything I wasn't expecting to see anything to be honest until the morning um, I might hear some carp splashing or jumping down further down the lake, maybe in the middle of the night or something, because that usually happens uh, pretty much every session I've been on. I've heard carp jumping in the middle of the night. Not going to bait up until at least about half an hour before it gets dark. That's when the uh, coots tend to just drift off and um, go somewhere else, either in, hide in snags or uh, go to sleep, really. Usually they do um, go away from the spot. Um, and then I've got some bait in. It's going to be slightly uh, colder on the night. Um, today wasn't that bad in temperature wise, and it was, the sun was out, which was quite nice, but um, tonight's going to be a little bit colder. Um, I'm not entirely sure if that's going to make a difference or not. Um, but, you know, I'm in it to win it, I suppose. Um, rigs are in now, and um, bait's going to follow suit, and hopefully um, by the morning I have a nice carp. Let's hope. Very predictable night. Last night um, I had coots diving on me until maybe until it went dark and then they went off which I kind of expected them to go off by then and then I had tench which I always expect to get tench at night. It doesn't matter what bait you use they just pick up anything so uh, yeah <laughs> I had a couple of tench, uh, a couple of takes, I think I landed one so, so far no carp. I did see one actually which was quite surprising. About an hour before it got dark I saw something come up for a leaf and I was like oh that's a carp. <laughs> I was not expecting to see one but uh, that was it really. He just come up for a leaf and then swam off. So um, yeah there has been carp here. Well they mostly come in here in the morning. Um, they normally swim up the shallows and then into the snags where I am which is right at the end. Um, this swim did really well in spring, um, so I was hoping it would do well in the autumn. So I was hoping it, would, it was going to do well, but um, I think so far. But um, there's still a couple of hours left. Never know, it could happen. I could get a carp, I could get a take, and all things hopefully should come to a great ending. <laughs> if not, 
Oh well, I had a good go anyway. <laughs> and I came into a swim that I had a bit more confidence in. But uh, so far, um, I haven't really seen any carp. But hopefully they'll come in soon. Well, the coots have been bothering me this morning as well, but um, they haven't been bothering me as much. Um, they did get the ducks to join in for a little while, and so far the ducks have gone off and the coots have sort of slowed down. Uh, they dive in. Um, I don't think they've eaten all the bait. I did put a little bit more bait in as well after I had those tench, but that's about it really um, for the old uh, <laughs> this morning and last night really. But uh, hopefully something will happen in the next couple of hours, and uh, yeah, everything should go well. Hopefully. <laughs> Well, I think that's about as much time I'm going to give it on this session. I've tried a different tactic, I thought it might work, it hasn't paid off for me. I haven't even had another tent or anything and constant diving by ducks and coots has been really frustrating. I think it's going to be quite a while until I come back but uh, I have a little thing about what I'm going to try next and hopefully then I'll catch something. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, don't forget to check out all my other videos and also don't forget to put a comment.